Hey, welcome to my channel. It's Kylie from Paint Wing. In today's video, I'm going to be going over how I find inspiration when I'm not sure what to paint. For those who are familiar with my work, you're aware that I mainly paint birds and other animals. So one thing I like to do is to look through books. I usually choose to look through field guides and other encyclopedias. This one here is a field guide to animals in North America. I live in the United States, so I like to pick animals that are local to where I'm at. So here it looks like we have some deer and then some moose and some mountain goats. So this book here I look through the most often because I mainly paint birds. I also often use this when I am bird watching if I can't identify a bird. So this book is the Birds of North America Eastern Region. For today's painting I'm going to be choosing a smaller bird. I'm running pretty low on my large watercolor paper. So I'm going to choose this guy right here, the common red pole. I've never painted one before so I think I'm going to go with him. I will be painting based off of the picture right here. Instead I will be getting an image from Shutterstock. I have an account on there so I can download a few images every month. So now that I know what we're going to be painting, I'm going to start off with a sketch. And for all my paintings, I do a freehand drawing beforehand. For pencils, I like to use the H pencils or the hard pencils. For drawing pencils, there isn't really a particular brand that I prefer. I usually just get whatever's in stock or available at the store that I'm going to. When starting out a drawing, I usually start with a light sketch just to get the proportions down. I usually start off with generic shapes like circles and triangles and lines. I know it's kind of difficult to see what I'm drawing here just because it's so light, but I promise there is something there. <laughs> a lot of times I don't show my drawing process, mainly for this reason, it doesn't really show up in videos very well. But it has been requested, so that's why I'm doing it in this video. For this initial sketch, I'm using an 8H pencil, so for the higher grade numbers, the harder the pencil will be, and then also for the hardness of the pencil, it equates to how light the pencil will show up on paper, if that makes sense. So for the next layer, I'm be using a lower grade hard pencil, and this one will show darker, and you'll notice that when I start the sketch. So this pencil here is a 4H pencil, and you'll see me go in and just kind of redefine the area, sharpen things up, and then move some things around. Just if the eye was a little bit off, I can move it over. Or maybe the beak, I didn't really like the size of it, so I can change that up a little bit. And then you'll still see some of the pencil from before, but it can easily be erased. So I actually went back in a third time with the 2H pencil. I didn't record the process because I tend to get really close to my drawing when I'm drawing and my head just gets away at the camera. So sorry about that. So this here is the final drawing before I begin the painting. While drawing, I try to replicate the way I'll be painting. So for example, in my paintings, I put a lot more detail in the heads of my subjects and I kind of loosen up in the body. So for the drawing, we're gonna add a lot more detail to the head and then just do a general sketch of the body, if that makes sense. Now I'll be moving on to picking out colors for the piece. So for this painting I'll be needing some yellows, I love yellow ochre, and then I'll also need some reds, and then a gray and a brown. And then I'll be using some round brushes as well. Here I'm picking out some smaller size brushes. Now we can begin the painting process. For a palette I'm just using a ceramic plate. I like using this plate because it's flat and I can easily mix the colors on, and they can also be easily cleaned off if I need them to be. I usually have a pretty messy palette though. I try to clean it off for videos, but I don't know. It doesn't bug me much when it's messy. For this painting, I'm going to be starting off with the beak. I usually start off with either the beak or the eye of the bird. Um, I also like to start off the more detailed areas and then loosen up as I go. I get asked a lot about my thought process and why I do what I do, and to be honest, a lot of it I think is just intuitive. There's not really a right or wrong way to do things. I guess one good reason from starting from either top to bottom or left to right is I am right handed and so it kind of prevents me from dragging my arm all the way across a wet painting if one area is still wet. This video isn't really going to be a step by step tutorial, just more talking about the process of how I paint and why I paint.
Some of you may already know or maybe just guess by watching my tutorials, but I am a self-taught watercolor artist. I haven't taken any formal watercolor classes or even lessons online. I did attend a four-year art and design college, but I actually studied furniture design there. And in that program, I'm mainly focused on woodworking and welding. And then I got back into painting after I graduated college. I hadn't been making art anymore, and when I was in school, I was constantly making stuff and like constantly involved in the artistic community, and I just felt like I needed to make something. And I actually got back into painting about the same time I got into birding. I think some people wonder why I decided to paint birds, and to be honest, a lot of it was because I was living in a very industrial area in a big city, and I just feel like I wasn't involved in nature. And one day I was on a walk, and I discovered that there was like a great blue heron rookery next to my house, and I just thought it was like so amazing that like this whole time I was living next to these beautiful creatures, and that I started to realize like how much more involved nature was, even in a big city that I was living in. And so I found a bird book and I started to identify a lot of the birds that were in my neighborhood. So I'd be out and I'm like, oh, that's a night jar. You know, that's a cardinal over there and a blue jay and with some flickers and the herons. And I started to then paint the birds because I was so inspired by them. And then that's kind of how it took off. And it's kind of funny because when I first started painting, I didn't even think people would like my bird paintings. I thought they'd find them kind of silly and... Maybe that was just like my idea or like my insecurities from like going to art college and kind of having this idea of what art should be or what art should not be. I'm not really sure I'm going with this. I'm kind of just rambling, but I guess like what I'm trying to say is like with my goal of my watercolor page and like with the tutorials is not to like show this is like the one way to paint. It's like the one way to do art, but it's just like this is how I do it. And I want to like help inspire people to be themselves and to create how they want to create and to make art. You know, whether or not you have the nicest materials or if you have the most education and that it's okay because it's like you don't need to be the best at something to do something like you can still have fun and you can still get started and that like not everything you make has to be something that like you sell or doesn't have to be like the most beautiful thing ever like you can just do it for you and to have that experience thank you for joining me on this kind of chatty painting video I will have the slowed down version of this video on my patreon if you want to watch the tutorial, you can watch it there. No worry guys, I will still have full tutorials on my YouTube channel. It's just sometimes the full tutorials take quite a bit of time to produce and it's been kind of burning me out a little bit, so I want to kind of mix up my content a little bit. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments of what you'd like to learn or maybe some behind the scenes on the art business or the process or maybe you want to learn about what art school is like or anything like that. And here's the final painting of the red pole. I might actually redo this one, but we'll see. Bye guys!